찬송가 465장 찬양을 부르시면서 예배를 준비하시겠습니다 
찬송가 543장 찬양 부르시겠습니다 Starting with the solemn prayer, let's offer up the Sunday morning service, Children's Sunday.
Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Let, please stand up and let's sing together verse 1 of hymn number 31. Amen. Let's read the versicle number 71. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not turn from it. Amen. Let's confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit down and offer a prayer of repentance looking back on the week. Amen. After we sing hymn number 300, Elder Johnny Kim will offer a representative prayer.
Father God of love, thank you for protecting us for the week and um, blessing us to come before you. On this Sunday, as we remember the great sacrifice of the Lord, let us worship you in spirit and in truth and with the inspiration and fullness of the Holy Spirit. Father God, as we welcome the, the month of family, as we see the green pastures and flowers around us, we, we see the work of your hands. You told us to honor our parents. And we just had a Parents' Day celebration recently. And we also have this uh, Children's Sunday. Please be with the uh, online service for children. Please extend your great love to our mom and children. Jesus told us to welcome children, and, and He laid His hand on them. Even little children, He respected them and loved them. And our senior pastor did the same. We are reminded of our, how our senior pastor did. And, th and He helped us also to long for New Jerusalem and have a blessed life. And also we have our active senior pastor who is delivering messages on Job so that we can discover ourselves and change ourselves. Thank you for this tremendous blessing. We also just uh, had uh, the Bible reading campaign, the Spiritual Growth Project, uh, thereby receiving a great spiritual blessing. Also, we have the Vow Prayer Meeting. Please be with uh, Ms. Bong Yum Lee, who is leading the Vow Prayer Meeting. Please, when our MAMI members worldwide attend the Vow Prayer Meeting, let them allow them to give glory to you through the Divine Healing Meeting in May. Today, we listen to senior pastor's lectures on hell. When he preaches the message, please help us open the door to our heart wide and receive the fullness and inspiration of the Holy Spirit from above. Through the message, we have learned the horrors of hell. Let us be more thankful and run vigorously towards heaven. You said, if you don't become like little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Let us engrave that word in our heart. Let us become pure, innocent, like children, without not being... Uh, let all our members become like that. Please be with um, Pastor Mi Kyung Lee, who is presiding the service. Uh, please joyfully accept the praise and performance of Emmanuel Choir and Nishi Orchestra and be glorified. Please remember all the helping hands for this service and pay them back with the heavenly rewards and also overflowing blessings on this earth. Also, please re remember all MAMI members who are joining this service through GCA Internet and Satellite. Pour out your great grace upon them. Please be glorified alone through this service. Thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The scripture for today's message is Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 and 23. Samuel said, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and in subordination is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has also rejected you from being king. Amen. Emmanuel Choir and his orchestra will glorify God with their praise and performance, and then we will listen to senior pastor's lectures on hell.
to your brothers and sisters, the branch churches across Korea and the world, and the members at the local sanctuaries, and all MAMI members who are joining the service through Internet and GCN. This is 13th session on the hell. These days, we can easily find people battling diseases. As the cancer comes closer to its final stage, the suffering of the patient is unspeakable. If it's possible, they perform surgery to remove the cancer. They usually remove some parts of the organ that has the cancer. If there is a recurrence or any other problem, they have to get surgery again. Some go through operations more than a dozen times. One of our church members has a father who is attending another church. Uh, he says that he has to receive uh, cancer surgery 12 times. Even if, after you receive uh, sur surgery, it recurs it, or it spreads to other organs. It happens many times. This is not the end. They go through various anti-cancer treatments, including chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Many times the treatments are accompanied by side effects. Patients suffer from nausea, feeling like their intestines are coming out and pain like their whole body is squeezed and twisted. Not long after I started this church, a child f came to this church during the uh, Friday all night service. It was one o'clock in the morning. She was terribly suffering from pain. She was healed after receiving my prayer, her, her belly swelled so much that she had an operation in a hospital. The doctors cut her belly open, but the doctors found that inside her belly was full of cancer. Doctors gave up and just covered her body, stitching it with wires. Inside her belly was seen. She had to get morphine several times a day because of pain. But she received my prayer and got healed uh, and gave glory to God. Cancer patients suffer tremendously. If you observe them, their hairs are just pulled out, aren't they? They become so thin, their body is like a thin tree branch. The hairs on their heads are pulled out in a messes. These patients can, who cannot be treated any longer by medicine only wait for their death taking painkillers. Not only cancer, but there are also many terrible diseases in this world. In some serious cases of diabetes, the patients have complications all over their body. Some of them lose their eyesight, others have their decaying legs amputated. Since it's not cured perfectly, but keeps on developing, they have to live in pain and anxiety throughout their lives. They cannot eat as they want, and they have to take medicine and get shots or get shots every day. They go to the hospital like it's their home. Then, the life of their family members also become devastated mentally and financially. As for AIDS, the patient's immunity decreases, and they easily become infected by germs or viruses. Then, their whole body becomes full of inflammations and tumors. The only thing they can do is wait for death with their body looking like it's been eaten by worms all over. In the case of leprosy, if they suffer an injury or any part of their body, like on their hand or foot, and it festers, the whole hand or foot may fall off. Today, with many accidents and industrial disasters, a lot of people lose their arms or legs. Some people are are severely burned all over their body, and the pain from their burns is so excruciating. There are some who cannot even eat or sleep well because of the pains caused by these diseases and accidents. They can get only broken sleep when they get painkillers that are almost like narcotics. If it gets worse, even these painkillers do not work. For those who are suffering from the pain without any hope, even one second is a, such a long time. Some of them lose the normal human form, not to mention their original appearance, and they think of suicide many times a day. But even these pains from diseases cannot be compared with the pains one suffers from in hell. In this world, they can rest, they can rest even just for a while, and, they, and when they die, that particular pain will go away. But in hell, the pains will continue nonstop for all of eternity. 
Brothers and sisters, Jesus healed many people of all kinds of illnesses. He also suffered the harsh pain of the cross to set us free from the diseases and the everlasting pain of hell. Just how many people around the world have been healed through this church? Not only cancer, but A's were healed. And if we only perfectly believe in this Lord, we can live a life that has nothing to do with the pain of diseases or pain of hell. I pray in the name of the Lord that all of you will live such a blessed life in the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, in the last session, I explained about Pilate among those who are receiving punishment of third level. As the retribution for handling, uh, handing over Jesus for scourging and crucifixion, he is also being scourged in the lower grave. Merciless messengers of hell are scourging him with the sharp whips whenever his name is called. But Pilate cannot even complain of his pain. It's because his tongue, which gave the sentence of crucifixion to Jesus, was pulled out as a curse. King Saul, the first king of Israel, is also among those who are receiving the third level punishment. He is hanging with his abdomen pierced through by a spear. The spear is not only sharp, but, is all, but it also has many screw-like barbs on it. It's hard for a man just to be hanging in the air, but how much harder it will be if he has been pierced through by a spear. Along with the pain of having been pierced through by a spear, the body will sack under the weight of the body, and skin around the wounds will be torn. The abdomen that's been pierced through by a spear will be torn by the barbs placed on the spear, and his muscles, bones, and intestines are visible. There's no way to grab the spear and pull it out. It would never be pulled out. Only the messenger of hell can move the spear, and from time to time, some messengers wearing gruesome masks of animals come and spin the spear. The messengers enjoy seeing him suffering from pain. So it spins the spare hard, left and right. As it spins the spare, all the organs, like the lungs, stomach, heart, and intestines, are ruptured. Even if the inside of abdomen is torn apart and, and in tatters, it soon recovers. Then, the messenger of hell comes and spins the spear again. Brothers and sisters, how did Saul end up in the lower grave? Why does he have to receive such harsh punishments? What comes to mind when you hear the name Saul? Probably you remember him chasing after David to kill him. For me, his arrogance comes to mind first. How arrogant he was before God. David was a man loved by God. Also, he was mentioned he was anointed as the next king to replace Saul. And the fact that Saul tried to kill this David indicates how arrogant he was. But as we go back in time a little more, we find that Saul was not that arrogant from the beginning. By the time he ascended to the throne, he was a humble person before God. When God nominated Saul as the king of Israel, Samuel said to Saul as follows. 1 Samuel 9, verse 20 says, And for whom is all that is desirable in Israel? Is it not for you and for all your father's household? And Samuel humbly responded as we find in the following verse 21. Am I not a Benjamite of the smallest tribes of Israel? That's right, Benjamin is the smallest tribe. And my family, the list of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin, why then do you speak to me in this way? When the people cast lots to select the king from the public, Saul, the son of Kish, was selected, as God had said. But Saul was nowhere to be seen. So, when the people asked God, God said he was hiding himself by the baggage. 
The baggage was what、well, people in those days were carrying for their travel. Saul was such a shy person. When Saul was chosen as the king, some worthless men said, "How can this one deliver us?" Even though they despised him, Saul remained silent. He didn't feel hurt or harbor any ill feelings. Thereafter, when Ammonites besieged Jabesh Gilead, Saul fought for his nation. He defeated the Ammonites and saved the people by relying on God and with His love for the people. With God holding on to this soul, He gained victory again and again. God highly regarded this heart of soul and anointed him as the king. But this heart, which he initially had, gradually changed. He should have changed the heart in a good way, in goodness, but he was the opposite. It shouldn't happen, right? Because he improved. He was promoted by God's help, so he has to be more humble. But he became arrogant quickly. For example, he offered a sacrifice which was possible only by the priests. He disobeyed God and committed sins again and again. You are well aware of the incident from First Samuel chapter 15. You, uh, uh, I mean, where he disobeyed God's command to destroy all of Amalek. God gave the command to destroy. Amalek, and God told them to destroy every person, young or old, or even all the cattle. This had already been decided during the Exodus. Exodus chapter 17, verse 14 says, "I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven." God had already announced the punishment. Namely, Amalek had stored up so many sins to the extent that they couldn't be forgiven at all. If Amalek had been left alone, Israel could have been influ- influenced by the Gentile customs like idolatry. That's why they had to be destroyed completely. But Saul did not obey the word of God. He brought Agag, the king of Amalek, alive, and came back triumphantly. He also brought along sheep, cattle that were in good shape. So God said to Samuel that he regretted appointing Saul to be the king. It was never the will of God to appoint a king in Israel. God wanted His people, Israel, to rely on Him only. Yet the people asked for a king who would protect them and rule over the country. Because of this earnest request, God appointed Saul, who was the most qualified among the people, to be the king. You may be curious as to why God set up Saul as the king. You know, God looks at how we are in the present. At the time, Saul was the most proper man. Even so, it was not God's will to appoint a king. It was what the people wanted. I've experienced such a case many times. If it is the will or command of God, all goes well. But there are often things that go on by man's thoughts. Oftentimes, they don't go well. People around me have gone through such things a lot, so now they know. When things go,、uh, when things don't go well, they realize that it's because they've done something. It's because they've done something involving man's thoughts. And when Saul did not obey God's commands, God was heartbroken. Because Saul understood this heart of God, he was concerned and cried out to God all night. Then Samuel spoke to Saul with a lamentable heart. First Samuel chapter fifteen verse seventeen says, Samuel said, "Is it not true, though you were little in your own eyes, you were made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed you king over Israel?" Then he explained in detail what wrong Saul did and what the will of God was. Yet, as you listen to this message, you shouldn't think, "Why did Saul act that way?" But you have to think about why you are also acting like Saul. You need a time to discover yourself. 
You may think, I'm living by the word, I'm praying, I'm living an earnest Christian life. Don't think that way. You have to examine whether you are acting like so. When God tells you to go east, if you go west, it's rejecting God. It is disobeying and ignoring God. And it is trampling on the word of God. When you disobey, you are trampling God. Father God has warned you many times from the altar. He tells you to live by the word, live in the light, not to commit works of flesh leading to death. But people, there are people who still do that. They are worse than Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23 says, Samuel said, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is the sin of divination, and insubordination is as iniquity and idolatry. If you are insubordinate, if you are insubordinate, uh, it It is disobeying. It is living according to your own thoughts. You think you, you are right, and your self-righteousness is right. You know, insubordination is like iniquity and idolatry, and rebellion is like the sin of divination. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has also rejected you from being king. God never rejects anyone first. It is the man who rejects him first. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, What does it mean? It's the same as having rejected God because the Word is the God Himself. Not obeying the Word of God is the same as not obeying God. Rejecting the Word, not keeping, not obeying the Word is the same as rejecting God. God is the Word. Then Saul seemed to repent. He admitted that he had sinned. But from the following words, but, but in the following words, he said, uh, But from the following what he said, we find that he didn't really mean what he said. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 24 says, I have indeed transgressed the command of the Lord and your words because I fear the people and listen to their voice. Saying this, Saul attributed his faults to the people. When did people tell him to do what he did? Even if, he hadn't, if, even if they hadn't done so, If he had been willing to obey the word, he could have just told them that he had to kill them all because God commanded it. Saul put the blame on his people. He was arrogant. And how cowardly and deceitful he was. Furthermore, he even made this request to Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 30 says, Then he said, I have sinned. But please, honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel, and go back with me that I may worship the Lord your God. Basically, what he meant was, I admit my sin, but please help me save my face before them as their king. Samuel was heartbroken whenever he saw Samuel, uh, he, whenever he saw Saul acting in such ways. From this incident, Samuel did not see Saul again until his death. As he repeatedly disobeyed the advice of Samuel, Saul ended up being forsaken. Brothers and sisters, if somebody has a fault, and if that fault is pointed out, how should the person react? He has to admit his fault immediately. He must not try to hide it with excuses. He has to turn back quickly and bear the fruit in keeping with repentance. Only then can God forgive him and he can go the way of life. Had had Saul turned back and repented when his sin was pointed out, his fate would have been different. But Saul only gave excuses and blamed others. He had to be humble before God, but being blinded by faith, he only wanted to be honored by the people. He forgot the fact that he did not become the king by his excellence, but by God. 
Saul became increasingly blinded as he tried to keep his fame and authority. Finally, he even opposed David who was anointed by God. David killed Goliath the Philistine and acted wisely wherever he went, wherever he was sent. Saul acknowledged him and appointed him the head of his army. But one day, some women sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. From this moment, Saul felt uncomfortable. He turned his attention to David thinking he was a threat to his throne. But David did not have any desire for the throne. He was only faithful to the country and the people. David saved the nation from great crisis with his outstanding achievements. David had a willingness to sacrifice even his life for King Saul as well as his nation and the people. As the king of the country, Saul should have been grateful to David. But because of his greed and envy, he considered David his enemy and tried to kill him. And only because they helped David, he killed 85 priests of God in Nob and almost destroyed the whole city. He killed 85 priests, in today's term, servants of God. Before, he was a humble man. But how arrogant he had become by slaughtering God's servants. He was tremendously in opposition to God. This was the same as directly opposing God. Opposing a man of God like this is opposing God Himself. God will never accept such acts, and He will certainly count them. Now, why did God not destroy Samuel, not destroy Saul immediately, although He was repeatedly disobeying and doing evil? God endured and waited because He knew that David would come forth as pure gold by being refined through Saul's persecutions. Namely, it's like shepherds putting goats among sheep. Since goats have horns and are stronger than sheep, if they bump into the sheep, they would be greatly bothered. They would be frightened and greatly bothered. Sheep are meek, so if goats bump into them, how stressed out and bothered they would be. Even so, shepherds leave the goats among them. Why is that? It's for the sake of the sheep's benefits. The same went for God. To make David more sanctified, God used Saul as an instrument. At the same time, God bore with Saul giving him chances to repent. David had two chances to kill Saul while he was being chased, but he let him go. When David showed his true heart towards Saul by saving him, Saul was touched. He was moved by David's true heart and even cried with a loud voice, calling David, My son. But Saul was different only for that moment. He did not repent from his heart. When you receive grace, when you are healed, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you shed tears with a running nose. Many people do that. But how long does that fullness last? In, in the face of trials and tests, they soon forget about that. They soon forget about the grace and the fullness. So, the fullness of the novice believers doesn't last long. That's why you have to come into the truth, because the fullness of the man of spirit lasts until the day the Lord comes back. Until now, I myself had never forgotten the thrills that I received when I first accepted God. I've never forgotten the grace. I've always kept it. It's got stronger and stronger. But Saul was different only for that moment. He did not repent from his heart. He soon resumed chasing David to kill him. Saul did not understand the heart of God who was patient with him. He just followed his greed without 
turning from his ways. As things went unfavorably in a battlefield, Saul set up his sword and fell over it. He faced a miserable outcome, committing a suicide. It was to avoid a miserable death at the hands of the Gentiles. As we can see, Saul just cared about keeping his pride and honor rather than following the will of God, even at the moment of his death. Which tells us why he has his abdomen having been pierced through by a spear in the lower grave. Also, out of hatred and jealousy, Saul once hurt his spear to David who was playing the harp for him. As retributions for such acts, he is, he is suffering from the pain of his abdomen being ripped apart by the sharp spear. As he is groaning, as he is groaning and hanging in the air, he must be thinking about the chances to repent given to him, like, "Why did I disobey? Why did I stand against God?" Of course, there are all meaningless thoughts since he is already in hell, but he cannot stop having a deep sigh of remorse and lamentation. But when the pain gets greater, he stops showing regrets and begins to speak evil words out of complaint and resentment. While he is doing that, he recovers from his wounds and the messenger of hell approaches him to spin the spear again. As he sees the messenger of hell coming towards him and staring at him, Saul is consumed by terror. He's already, he already begins to feel suffocated even by the thought of what he will go through. Even if he please, please leave me alone, please stop it. It's no use. Seeing this soul who is terrified, the messenger of hell looks more satisfied and spins the spear. As he spins the spear again and again, soul has to suffer from the pain of his body being torn apart. Brothers and sisters, you have to always check whether, you are not, whether or not you have become arrogant before God. The higher your position is, and the more recognized and loved you are, you have to always remember the grace of the first love. We are all sinners. Without Jesus carrying the cross, we would be destined to suffer in hell just like Saul. But God saved us from that misery. He gave us grace, health, financial blessings, and duties so we can be faithful workers of God. How can we say, I did this, this is mine? Therefore, you always have to be humble before God and the brothers of faith. You must not have any desire to be served. You have to thoroughly cast off your lust, arrogance, and greed for fame, authority, and money by circumcising your heart. If you discover any acts of untruth from you, you have to repent immediately. You know, out in the world, even humble persons become arrogant once they are promoted or gain some authority. When they are in the lowest position in a company, They are so humble. If their boss is strict, they lower themselves. But what would happen once they become leaders? They change and become so arrogant. But in the truth, in the Lord, let's say you are promoted from deacon to elder. As an elder, uh, as a deacon, you can say to young brothers saying, Do this, do that. But once you are promoted to an elder, you have to change yourself. You, you have to change yourself more into a more humble person. You have to change your attitude as an elder. You have to say like, young man, please, I ask you to do this. You have to say that way. And pastors, when you are seminary students, you can... You may speak comfort comfortably to anyone, but once you are ordained as a pastor, you have to change your attitudes. Once you become a servant of the Lord, once you become a pastor, you should indeed lower and humble yourself. You have to speak 
to people in honorific forms, you ha- humbly. Once you become a servant of the Lord, you have, have to humble yourself and lower yourself more. You shouldn't say like, I become a pastor, I be- become an elder. You shouldn't become haughty like that. That doesn't mean uh, you have to look down. But you shouldn't look haughty. You have to humble yourself. Then you will be loved and respected. If you discover any acts of untruth from you, you have to repent immediately. At first, you might feel afflicted in heart, and there could be a punishment of God's love. But if you keep on committing sins, you don't even have any pangs of conscience later. If you keep on sinning, you don't have a qualms of conscience. Even after you commit sins, you don't know, realize it is a sin. You become jealous of a servant of God and slander him and interfere with him. You create a party in a church and divide. As a, uh, Many years ago, when I was uh, visiting revival meetings at Um, the pastors of that church asked me to shatter their elders, change their senior dickinesses. They said that when, I, when they preached, they just fall, fall asleep and their members created parties. They explained how their elders, how their uh, senior dickinesses created parties and they asked me to break them. There are, in those churches, there were elders' parties and senior deaconess' parties and the pastors' parties. But those pastors didn't tell me in detail. But I didn't directly point it at that out. I, don't, I didn't need to do that. I didn't point out, why do you have parties in your church? Why do you have synagogue of Satan? Why? If only I preached about this message, messages of, message of the cross, even only if I preached them once, they were shattered, they were broken. Those people later on came to me uh, when, when we had a meal together or during lunch. They came to me and repented. They came to me and repented. This happened when I was a seminary. Uh, not every church was like this, but... Some churches have such parties. They form parties. So, you should never create a party in in the church. No pastor, no elder, no church leader should uh, create a party or a group. Then, there will be a synagogue of Satan. In this church, as well, there should be no uh, party of senior pastor. There should be only a party for God, the Lord, You know, we are daughters and sons and the brides of the Lord. We have to be united with God and the Lord. You have, should have unity. There should be no party for senior pastor or party for anyone. King Saul is an example of such cases. You should learn from his example and never walk the same path. It was, a, it was the problem in the history of Korea that... Uh, There were so many party disputes. They stood against each other for hundreds of years. A party that supported this prince, another party that supported prime minister, and so on. They were divided into so many parties, and they persistently fought. Especially, you have to realize that what a great sin it is to stand against a man of God and never speak or think anything against him. Brothers and sisters, those who are truly acknowledged by God humble themselves more as they are acknowledged and loved more. Also, those who ardently and truly love God have no room for love for the world. I pray in the name of the Lord that you always put yourself in the lowest place until Father God leads you to the highest place, New Jerusalem. Let us reflect on today's message in our prayer.
아버지 사울은 지옥에서 아버지 날카로운 창에 아버지 꽂혀 있다 말씀 들었습니다. 왜 이런 아버지 이런 고통을 받을 수밖에 없었는지 사울은 교만했고 아버지 낮은 마음이었고 아버지 왕이 되기 전에는 겸비한 마음이었지만 왕이 되고 나서는 교만했습니다. 또 악을 행했습니다. 다윗을 아버지 사랑했던 다윗을 아버지 잡아 죽이러 쫓아다녔습니다. 얼마나 큰 죄를 지으면서도 알지 못하며 하나님 말씀에 수시로 불순종하면서도 깨우치지 못하고 늘 변명만 되고 이유만 됐습니다. 아버지 우리 모습은 어떠한 모습이 되어야 될지 깨우쳐 보게 하여 주옵소서. 내가 아버지 머리가 되어지고 점점 더 아버지 큰 자가 되어질수록 낮아진 마음이 되어지며 겸비한 자가 되어지며 하나님 기뻐하시는 자가 되어질진데 그렇지 못하며 내가 교만해지고 내가 어떤 지적을 받는다 할지라도 아멘하고 순종하며 나아갈 때 나가야 될 텐데 그래하지 못하며 또 교만하고 또 변명하고 이유되고 있습니다. 아버지 용서하여 주시며 우리 안에 더욱더 깨우침과 깨달음이 되게 하여 주시고 사울을 통해서 나를 발견해 볼수 있는 은혜로운 시간 될수 있도록 함께하여 주시옵소서 감사하오며 우리 주 예수 그리스도 이름으로 기도하옵나이다. 아멘. 아멘. It's time to receive the prayer for the sick. If you are sick, lay your hands on your sick part. If you are not sick, lay your hands on your chest and receive the prayer with the heart's desire. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV, in branch churches and local sanctuaries, and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith of belief from hearts, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, nerves, and tissues and cells, wherever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commend the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses and infirmities go away. Light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases including malaria. All contagious diseases including cold flu and fever go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, uh, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well, let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents, fix their broken bones, restore them from burns, let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves and tissues and cells be regenerated, bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places, and their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false and deceitful spirit, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness, loosen the bonds of wickedness, darkness go away, light come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be vandalized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery walls of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. 
give students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from holy things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God saying, I've met an experienced God and received these answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's sing together m a m i n praise number 192 and present our offerings. Announcement. We welcome all those who have newly registered as our members. The senior pastor's book, Worshiping in Spirit and in Truth, has been published in Spanish and Holland. Mami News uh, have been published online in Malaysian. Mami News 992th issue has been uh, published online. We, we can, it, it is available on church's website. Senior Pastors' uh, columns have been carried on Christian newspapers. The, the leaflets for the sharing of the gospel has been published for this month. They are placed in the information desk and the planning department. Please make the most of use of them for the sharing of the gospel. The children's online service will take place at 1 a.m. today, and there will be Uh, the Holy Spirit prayer meeting with uh, Ms. Bong Nim Lee at 1.30. And there will be a um, divine healing meeting in May on 26th May with the uh, acting senior pastor. The patients, if you want to register as a patient, it will be received from May 8th through 14th. 
The vow prayer meeting will start from May 8th through 28th with uh, Ms. Bong Nim Lee. The preparatory praise will begin from 8.40 p.m. Sina Pax's books are available in Kobo Bookstore, Yangpeng Bookstore, and many other leading bookstores in Korea. And they're also published in audiobooks, and they are available in online bookstores as well. Please make, you most, make the most use of those books for your spiritual growth and for the sharing of the gospel. We will pray for the offerings. Father God, we give tithes, thanksgiving, charity, support, and Sunday offerings, as well as for missionary works. Also, we give Please bless us 30, 60, or 100 times according to what we've done and sown. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Please bless their Amen. Thank you.